Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 22 to 23. Son of man, what is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying, the days are prolonged and every vision faileth. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to see and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. The days are at hand. Avoiding vision delay. Vision failure, part three. plan of God for your life and every purpose of God for your life that has been experiencing delay or failure today is the expiry date of that failure I decree and declare and announce and pronounce and prophesy in this season what God has spoken concerning your life shall come to pass I said what God has spoken concerning your life shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. In scriptures, it is clear that vision can fail. Out of scripture, we know. Either fail to be conceived or fail to be fulfilled. Failed, either fail to be received or also fail to be achieved. Fail to be received or fail to be realized. What are these now the things that cause vision to fail? We call them enemies. What are these enemies? Number one is the wrong company. First service we said company affects mindset. Company affects choices. And company affects lifestyle. There are things you cannot see because of who is around you. If you are surrounded with people who are not seen far, they will impart you with short-sightedness. In Matthew chapter 2, we saw wise men who saw a star that they followed from the land of the east? The star was giving them direction to the newborn king, Jesus. Then they mistakenly branched into the house of Herod instead of following the star. Matthew chapter 2 verse 7 to verse 9. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. And he came and stood over where the young child was. That passage looks to me like the star was in front of them. Until they made the wrong choice to branch the house of Herod. And it appeared like the star disappeared. Until they came out of that house of Herod and the star went before them. Listen to me. There are people in whose company your vision and dreams simply disappear. There are people you come in 
took association with delete your vision. They delete your dream. Suddenly you can't see what you used to see anymore. Suddenly your gifts disappear. Revelation gifts disappear. Suddenly your, 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 your aspiration disappears. Suddenly what you are, your passion, your fire dies. What you are longing for disappears. Who are those kind of people? They are the people who represent the opposite of everything you represent. When you come into the company of people who are the exact opposite of your life's passion, the exact opposite of your life's vision, the exact opposite of your life's aspiration, when you come into the company of people who are going in direction, exactly opposite your direction, they simply neutralize your life. Why? We know in elementary arithmetic that plus one minus one equals zero. You have a positive direction. You come into contact with somebody in the negative. You just, it, just, it just neutralizes you out. That is why there are people today, the visions, the dreams that they grew up with, they can't find it anymore. There are those who are... Who are in the younger Christian days, they had more passion for God, more fire for God. But they, come in, they came into the friendship and relationship with Christians that are complacent and settled. People that desire nothing. They claim they have been in church for 20 years. Don't calm down. This is how we used to do it 20 years ago. Calm down, calm down. This fire you are having will soon dry. I used to be like you when I was, I was younger in the faith. I used to be like you. Those are the kind of people to run away from. Because they will ruin your life and ruin your destiny the way they ruin their own lives. Am I communicating at all? Be careful of hanging around people that are going nowhere. Be careful. The wrong company. Number two is discouragement from delay discouragement from delay every vision is for an appointed time what God wants to do with your life is for an appointed time according to Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 3 the vision is for an appointed time it speaks at the end not at the beginning What are you to do? Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Don't be tired. Don't be weary. Don't be exhausted. We're doing the right thing. Because in due season, you shall reap if you don't get tired. It is only when you refuse to get discouraged that you achieve destiny. Say that again. It is only when you refuse to get discouraged that you achieve your God-given purpose. It is only when you refuse to get discouraged. It is only when you decide to hold on. It is only when you decide to keep on keeping on. When you faint in action, you will fail with the vision. When you faint in action, you fail with the vision. When you faint in action, you fail with the vision. When you faint, when you get tired of doing what you are meant to be doing, you can't reach where you are meant to go. I speak into everyone's life here. Every spell of discouragement is hereby arrested in the name of Jesus. It is arrested. Jesus was born to be the deliverer and savior of the world. Yet for 30 years, he couldn't heal a fly. But he waited. He waited until the power of God came upon him 
and the vision came to pass. The wrong company, enemy number one, discouragement from delay, enemy number two, unrighteousness and ungodliness is enemy number three. Your consecration is the determinant of your vision. The strength of your consecration will determine the strength of your vision. If you lose consecration, you will lose vision. If you lose consecration, you will lose passion. If you, if you, if you, if you become slack in integrity, you will become sluggish in intensity of everything. If you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph was a symbol of consecration. In Genesis 39 verse 9, he said, how can I do this wicked thing against God concerning the matter of Potiphar's wife? In Genesis 42 and in verse 18, he said, and I, he said I fear God. If you are a symbol of character, you will be a symbol of vision fulfillment. People of character are people whose visions have no option but to come to pass. Everything that fights your character, fights your vision. I mentioned it in the first service. Samson's vision could not come to pass because of compromise. The wrong company, discouragement from delay, unrighteousness, and ungodliness number four is the snare of imitation and competition. The snare of imitation and competition. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 said, those who compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Let me say something to you. And I don't want you to forget this for the rest of your life. The best you can be in this world is who God wants you to be. The best you can achieve in, in this life is what God wants you to achieve. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to 12, he said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Verse 12. He said, I have not already attained, neither was I already perfect, but I follow after. If I can apprehend that for which also I am apprehended, of Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself. Summary is, my greatest struggle is to become what God wants me to become. Is to achieve what God wants me to achieve. Is to reach where God wants me to reach. Listen to this. Imitation is limitation. Imitation is limitation. You limit your life. You limit your destiny. When your struggle is, is the attempt to be like somebody. You limit your life. Imitation. And comp and, now imitation is limitation. Whereas competition is complication. Competition complicates your life. Unhealthy competition. The attempt to outdo somebody. It complicates your life. Hallelujah. All I want to be Lord. Is what you want me to be. All I want to achieve. Don't waste your energy. Trying to deshine anybody. Don't waste your life. Trying to undo anybody. Don't waste your time. Trying to antagonize anybody. No, you don't need that. Nobody has your set of potentials. Nobody has your, your, your emotional composition. Nobody has your giftings and your talent. Nobody has. Am I communicating at all? What is the base of competition between an eagle and a lion? The, 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 the eagle can roar. The lion can soar. Hey. 
There's no basis of competition. If you are an eagle, go into the sky and do your thing there. Maneuver there. If you are a lion, go into the forest and roar there. Look at the neighbor and say, I, am not, I cannot be in competition with you. Because I don't carry what you carry. And you don't carry what I carry. Never struggle to make impression. Always struggle to give expression. Don't struggle. Don't, don't try to make any impression on nobody. All you need to do is just be on giving expression. And if anybody is impressed by your expression, no challenge. But just go ahead. That was number four thing that kills vision. People that could have gone far in life struggling with quarreling with competitive jealousy somewhere. Number five is procrastination or inaction. Inaction. Procrastination. The Bible said the vision is for an appointed time that he may run, that read at it, that he may run. That read at it. To fulfill your purpose in life, you must be a runner. A runner, not a crawler. There is no destination without action. You must be a runner. One of my, ex, one of my favorite men in scripture is, 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 Paul the, was Paul, is Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle was a late comer. Paul was not there when Jesus called 12 disciples. Paul wasn't among. Paul wasn't there at the crucifixion. He wasn't there. But Paul came later. And Paul began to interpret the cross to those who were there and didn't understand what they were seeing. Paul was interpreting the burial, the resurrection, the ascension. He was interpreting it. I call Paul the Apostle the late comer who became the frontliner. It doesn't matter how late you came into God. What matters is how aggressive you are moving. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 10. Paul the Apostle speaking, he said, but by, now start from verse 9. He said, I am the least of the apostles. I am not qualified even to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by his grace which was bestowed upon me, that grace was not in vain. He said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. I outworked everybody. But not yet, not I. But the grace of God that was upon me. If you are ready to walk, you will leave the back and move to the front. I don't care where you are now in life or where you are in the realm of the spirit. I can assure you that the abundance of action will produce an abundance of acceleration. The abundance of labor will produce an abundance of results. The abundance of action will produce an abundance of acceleration. The abundance of labor will produce the abundance of result and i see somebody here the grace to, to walk the grace for labor is coming upon you now and you are moving faster than those who started before you you believe that shout the loudest amen see after me it's not how long i came but how hard i walk that determines how fast I move. Did you hear that? Not how long you came, 
But how, f- how hard you walk determines how fast you move. What walk? Spiritual walk. What walk? Disciplined walk. Exercise in the realm of the spirit. There are people who come to church 20, who came 20 years ago. There are those who only came 5 years ago. And everything is shifted. A young man met me yesterday and for, for, for the last how many days he has been meeting me almost every day. It's, it's, all, 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 it's, as, it's as if he's receiving a testimony every single day. I see him wait. I say, what's happening? He say, I came again. Another one just happened. I just got, I just, I just went to the walk. And they just paid me cash. See, this is my first time receiving foreign currency. In many, many, many zeros. I came to honor God. And fulfill my covenant obligations. That's why I came. He went and returned back. He went and he kept coming. He kept going and kept coming. I said, all, all I want you to do is to just ensure that the things you have learned and the things you have known, hold on to them. The things that you are working, that are, is, that are, those things that are working for you now, keep on working them. He said he's not, he's not willing to retire from them. Am I communicating? Not how long you came, but how hard you walk determines how fast you move. Somebody say it loud, Amen. I see somebody moving forward here. I see somebody moving forward here. If you are the one moving forward, shout the loudest, Amen. Shout Amen at the top of your voice. A louder believers, Amen. Enemy number six is the wrong timing. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 It says there is a To everything there is a season And a time to every purpose On the heaven And in verse 11 he said He had made everything beautiful In his time He has made Everything Beautiful In his time Please don't forget Even though we say we should act in vision Yet there is a time for everything under heaven. During the wedding in Cana of Galilee, the mother of Jesus came that they needed wine. John chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour has not yet come. According to the meaning of that is, even before he could perform miracles, it was agreed between him and the Father in heaven that there was an hour for the miracles. And from his last discussion with his father, it wasn't time yet. But when Mary persisted, I perceived that the master, the father said to him, go ahead. This obedience and this persistence from Mary has fast forwarded the time. Am I communicating at all? One day his brethren came to him. John chapter 7 verse 2 and to 6. There was the feast of tabernacles. And then his brethren said to him, Depart hence, go to Judea, that the disciples also may see the works that you do. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret and himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. But your time is always ready. It's the meaning of that is, as for me, I have a time that I do, every, do things. You, you, you do everything anytime you want. Your time is always available. For me, I have the difference between my result and your result. 
is that you don't know what the difference between time is. But for me, I don't just move anyhow. I said when time, the right time, marries the right purpose, beauty is born. Don't just ask God to give you his plan for your life. Ask him to give you the timing. Lord, is it time? Doing the wrong things, doing the right thing at the wrong time is never beautiful. Never beautiful. Never beautiful. Young baby giving birth to a child, very ugly. Somebody, man is 75 years old, going to marry for the first time. There is an ugliness to it. But nobody will be delayed like that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The wrong timing and finally the wrong approach. The wrong approach. The wrong approach. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 shows us that the labor of the foolish tires out everybody because he doesn't know how to go to the city. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 6 also shows us to every purpose there is time and judgment. The NIV said to every purpose there is a proper time and a proper procedure. Proper procedure. Proper procedure. Proper procedure. Proper procedure. Proper procedure. I like to say this and I end. Every vision has its procedure. God says, conquer for me billions for the evangelization of the earth. The question is, what business am I to go into? Step into church planting work. And let me win millions to the kingdom. Question is, what is the procedure? Now let me say this and don't forget it. The vision may be similar, but the procedure may be quite different. Totally different. God may give a vision that is similar to a vision you know. And the procedure is totally different. For example, Jesus Christ healed blinded eyes in different ways the vision was to open the eyes of the blind but the process was different in diverse ways do you remember one time the blind i said that son of david have mercy on me he touched their eyes and he said see another one he just spoke your faith has made you whole be healed the eyes was opened Another one is part on the ground, made clay, and blinded the eye further. And said he should go to the pool and wash. What are you talking about? I can't see you as soon as you go. With which eye will I go to the pool? But the blinded man went to the pool and saw. Another one, he touched his eyes. He said, Can you see? The man said, I see nothing. He touched him and said, can you see, see, I see men walking like trees. He said, then that is not good. That is half vision. If they are trees, you might as well cut them with cutlass. Then he gave him a second touch and he saw clearly. The vision was one. Let the blind see. The procedure was different. That is why he had 100% resolve. Because if the first time you use mud, you know, if it was some of us, if you use mud and somebody's eyes see, the next day you say, oh, every blind person line up. I have a mud spitting service. Mud and spittle service. You, 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 you use the mud on all of your eyes 
and 99 of them none saw because that was not the process for these ones the mud worked for the other one but God who knew the mystery of their blindness also knows the mystery that can tackle it stand up on your feet that's another reason why imitation is a challenge am I communicating now, that's why trying to do it like that other person can be a challenge because God may have given a revelation and the revelation will, will be based on the mystery behind the situation and, and your case may be different one woman had an ulcer, mouth ulcer that failed to be healed it was in an area one church and she said one night she dreamt a dream and she saw herself chewing sugar cane now that's a challenge that is eating in the dream. <laughs> but she woke up and went and bought sugar cane. And the ulcer in the mouth dried up. Because the God who sees everything knew what caused the ulcer. And he knew the mystery that would tackle that mystery. Maybe they used sugar cane to do so. Nobody knows. The question is, if you have a problem in your mouth, you should buy sugar cane. No. You buy sugar cane, it may worsen the problem. Hallelujah. You will not miss God. You will not miss God. It's a new day for somebody. It's a new season for somebody. Lift up your hands and give him the praise and give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Worship him, honor him, adore him. 